does anybody want this body back? No. <laughs> and if, if Yeshua tarries like he's been, there won't be anything of this body anyway if it's in a, in a box or if it's cremated or anything else. You're going to end up dust and dirt and whatever anyway. Okay? And whatever essence is actually you is no longer in the body. Okay? That's where you're asleep. So this shell, this vessel, you know, this flesh suit that we have, it doesn't matter what happens to it. Okay? Okay, now we should try to take care of it while we live in it because it's part of how we can have the time we want and need and desire to grow and change and transform. So take care of it while you can. But once you're done with it, it doesn't really matter what they do with it and you shouldn't really care about it. There are, there are people that can understand this with me, for example. I'm not very social. I'm not an introvert or anything. I'm just not very into those like normal just chit chat, social, whatever. But if you catch me with the right topic, we could talk for a long time. We start talking about, you know, the Cowboys and football, we may talk for a while. We talk about music, we talk for a while. We talk about certain things that I'm into and you're into. As long as we're both into it, we can have a lot of a conversation, okay? Some of you are actually very social where even if you're not into it, you could act like you're into it just because you like the interaction. Reds don't do that very well, okay? But that's the whole thing is that stop making it all, when it comes to our being in but not of the world, stop making it all about the walk. Your choices are all about the walk. How you interact with people is about other commonalities. I mean, do you have other commonalities? But the answer, Rocky, goes back to something I haven't said in a long time, but I've said it and you guys can remember back to it, which is you must begin, see if you remember this, with a hyper vigilant awareness of yourself. So you almost have to have this out of body, looking over your own shoulder, aware of what you're doing. I don't mean like new agey out of body or any of that stuff. I'm saying, but somehow you have to be watching yourself get angry going, what in the world is that about? Instead of just being angry, letting the emotion turn you into a state of being, okay? or being happy, or being dumb, or being smart, or being, th but when you say that awareness, it has to start off with being outside. See, I can watch you and see something if I'm with you, because I'm not you, I'm outside of you watching. I'm not connected to the emotions you're feeling and the thoughts that are, are raging through whatever, okay? Because they're all gonna tell you in mainstream and in some of these other messianic groups, well, that Messiah just gives you all of that ooey gooey and changes you and all that other stuff. No, you're still the same person you were before. You have a little bit new information than you had before. Maybe you changed some behaviors. But how do we elevate? The idea in all of these other places is to elevate. They all promote this idea of elevating to this next level. Guess what? That's, that's here. I mean, that's not a Buddhist, Hindu, New Age, Taoist, whatever. It's not, they didn't come up with it, okay? All the cultures came up with the same understanding. We're supposed to elevate. With or without structure is the argument, right? Okay. Now, the argument against structure is a really strong one because it's been done so horribly and abusively. When Yeshua saw it, okay, because they, they were bringing little children to him in verse 13 and the tall ones were rebuking them. What, what he's saying is, let the little child come to me and do not forbid them for such is of the kingdom. So when a child, and by the way, I've seen this in most children. They're pretty good judges instinctually, okay? They will instinctually stay away from or gravitate towards. They have a fairly good sort of barometer about that as a, as a kid, okay? And a lot of the trauma you guys have is that your barometer said, no, 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 I need to get away from, and somebody forced you to be with that person, okay? But I think children have a pretty good instinct, all right? And he's saying, these children want to come to me. You need to be like this child. And by the way, the child has no agenda. It doesn't know why. Then you get to verse 12, which says, she shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life which is why he trusts her also. So what does it mean to do good? Mm -hmm. She's gonna do things that are good by his definition, okay. okay? In other words, what he would desire, because we're talking about a husband and wife here, 
So it's not just a Yahweh definition here, but you know, you may want to do something for me that I don't want you to do for me. And not because it's bad or anything, it's just I'd want to do it myself or whatever it is. So you must learn your spouse, both ways, by the way, because I would want also as a husband to do good for my wife, but it has to be something she thinks is good. Right. Now, then it says, and not evil. What do we define evil as? Harm, suffering, okay? Destruction of some sort. Now, by the way, you can't do good or evil in a relationship unless you know what that other person sees it as. So I don't see anything in this verse, and I, it's the first time it's ever really come up where I got to address it. I don't see anything in here that has anything to do with health, okay? Physical health. Oh yeah, it's spiritual health, psycho-emotional health. I didn't have anything in here about physical health. Does everybody agree with me now that you're seeing it that way? Okay, which is why it never worked. Hallelujah. And everybody's all, that's part of your question. Is how come, am I not believing enough? Am I, because he said, after all, by his stripes, I'm healed. Every church teaches you to stand on that. But that's, it's not talking about physical health here. The whole context of this part of Isaiah is about a breach of relationship being healed at some point. Okay? And that relationship is between Israel and the Creator. I, I mean, if you read in the uh, Exodus journey, I mean, Yahweh's with men, met at the tent of meeting and other places without the ark being there. Okay. Okay. I mean, he doesn't need the ark to do anything. I didn't know. Would it be there? Yeah. I mean, I don't think there's any um, reason that you couldn't speculate that it would be reunited with a temple at some point, or at least brought back into, you know, into play at some point. I would guess that would probably be more after the return of Yeshua that we would then see that happen. I don't see anything in Revelation or anywhere else that seems to hint that you would see the ark pop up at any point prior to that, okay? I would think that it's an, an important enough object of the story mm -hmm. that it, it would likely make an appearance at some point, um, but I would think that would be in the millennium. Okay. Okay, and then restored to function, to whatever function it had. But prolonging the days as it's used, he's saying if you do these things, and it doesn't talk about redeeming time, if you are submitted to, covenanted, and do these things, you will prolong your days in the land, is what it talks about. It talks about the idea of the kingdom. It's, like, it, it's, a, it's a metaphor, idiomatic phrase for that, in my opinion, okay? So, I mean, I like the connection you're trying to make, but I think that the verse from the Brit Chadashah that you quoted says it enough. The idea of renaming the time matches what you're saying, okay? If we do these things, we are redeeming redeeming time, which then gives us more time to hopefully do the transformation we need to make, okay? But I think the idiomatic phrase from the Tanakh is a reference to, if we do these things, you're not just gonna live long in the land, but you're also then going to have the opportunity for the kingdom. But he wants us to learn what we need to learn so that we can be trustworthy in that place, okay? Otherwise, you're going to have what you see play out in the Greek and the, all the other mythology, Roman and Norse. You're going to see gods fighting with each other. Yeah. That's what it would look like if you and all of us were given that kind of immortality as we are right now. There would be petty fighting and destruction of all this stuff. Okay? So he's not going to give us that until we become the stuff that's inside this shell healthy enough to be in an immortal shell. Does that make sense now? Oh, man. Which is why you need to let me help you to get the junk out, get it dealt with, get it healed, so that you can become whole and healthy. It, not your body, the stuff that's living in your body, the you that's in this thing, this, this, this vehicle. 